Hello everyone, today is Wednesday, June 18, 2025. I'm Mark Brash, your host, aka Whiskey One Mike Mike, amateur radio operator. And this is installment number two of the SB230 Heath Kit Linear Amplifier Upgrade. So I received a couple of things today. Uh, in the mail came these two copper blocks that I ordered for uh, the, uh, the GI-7Bs to conduct the heat to the heat sink. And I did end up going to my buddy's house this morning to pick up a couple of big kahunas. <laughs> uh, the GI-7B new in the box power triode with heat sink these are pristine and uh, he uh, he didn't want a whole lot of money for them couldn't say no and with these I should leave it out because I'll be using the uh, the perimeter of the base of the tube as my template for making the tube socket the only other part that I'm waiting on is the 12 volt filament transformer and there's a lot I can do without the transformer. So uh, first thing I'm going to dive right into is I'm going to dive into making the tube socket. The last tube socket that I made as you'll see in this picture right here, um, I really kind of made this tube socket flying by the seat of my pants. Uh, didn't really know what I was doing. I kind of made it a little bit too big. This time I'm going to be a little bit more more careful, a little bit more diligent. And uh, to that end, I've got uh, I've got some uh, cardboard from uh, a Glad uh, Glad kitchen bag container. Right. I'm going to cut this up, and I'm going to use this as my template for. Uh, making the original openings for the the uh, the two layers of the tube socket for for this particular tube and I'm also going to um, Do my best to get this damn sticky stuff off the back of the finger stock that I'll be inserting in the in the round openings of the uh, the tube socket layers this is the double clad PC board that I'm you that I cut up to uh, to make the make the thing and uh, let's see here where's my precision tool yeah here's my uh, my precision hole cutter <laughs> it's a, a uh, multi diameter hole saw and it cuts a clean enough hole, undersized, that I can file it out to the correct size after, after I'm done making the hole. So that's the one that I need. These are the ones that I don't need. And I'm pretty sure... Yeah. That's definitely the one that I need. So, uh, we'll start with the cardboard, fit it into place inside the, inside the cabinet of the SB230, and then I'll cut out the, uh, the, the squares from the copper and start uh, drilling them out and uh, putting them together. What I'm going to do to get the adhesive off, I'm going to take the, take the uh, paper backing off of this and stick it in a container with some acetone. I've been uh, looking around the workshop for uh, different, uh, different kinds of plastic that would stand up to acetone. I have uh, a little acetone dispenser here that uh, I moisten a, a, a towel with or a paper towel with and check to see if any of the plastic comes off. And, 
the, the lid to a Betty Crocker frosting container, which is uh, number four LDPE, low density polyethylene, uh, appears to hold up to the acetone. Not all plastics do, a lot of plastics will melt. So I'm gonna take and put the finger stock in here pour some acetone and just let it soak so that I can hopefully get clean the uh, clean this adhesive off the back of it very easily unlike last time uh, and I have to be careful because if I get acetone on this anti-static mat here this does not stand up well to acetone and it eats it real quick so I have to do it over on the other bench so in these next two photos you can see I have the uh, finger stock soaking in acetone and then I placed a piece of PC board on top of it to hopefully keep the acetone from venting off because it evaporates very quickly. We'll see how that goes. So you can see I'm off to a very good start. There's, there's not much gap here. And uh, I forget how many thousandths of an inch I need between the edge of the, uh, edge of the, um, the grid and the opening of the hole. But it's like, uh, I think, 20, 25 thousandths of an inch. Um, so, yeah, this is very close. And it doesn't require a whole lot of filing to uh, get the final, final dimension out of that. At this point, no. I'm going to go double check my uh, finger stock to see if the, the glue is coming off. I'll start taking some measurements off of that. So the good news is the idea worked. The bad news is, when I attempted to lift the PC board off of the cover, uh, vacuum took it up with it and it spilled all over my bench and everything down below my bench. Thankfully, nothing was too sensitive to the acetone. No plastics got damaged that I know of. So, moving forward. So, here's my finger stock, all nice and clean. And the next thing I want to do is calculate exactly what size diameter hole I want this finger stock going into so that I get maybe 10 to 15 thousandths of an inch worth of compression on the fingers of the finger stock when I insert the tube that would create the, uh, the, the pressure fit into the tube socket. So starting out with the diameter of the grid, okay? We have 1.415 inches for the diameter of the base. The finger stock, uncompressed, is 72 thousandths of an inch, uncompressed. So compressed, I want this to be, uh, we'll call it 60 thousandths of an inch, okay? If I add 60 thousandths of an inch times two, to 1.415, so I need to add 120 thousandths to 1.415. And that required very little filing of this opening. This opening is 1.52. And that was just about perfect for this finger stock. So that's how I go about calculating the opening for the finger stock in the large opening. Where, where did I do that? So I'm going to take and I'll wrap the finger stock around on the inside. I'm going to cut it to length and then solder it to an opening inside one of these PC boards. The question now becomes how big of a square do I want to make for this tube socket on top of the on top of the chassis. My last one, I have a I have a mark right here. Was if 
I can find my tape measure. About two and a half inches. I'm going to take a leap of faith here. I marked off the copper board with two inch squares. Turns out the board is six inches wide, so I'll end up getting three two inch squares out of it. If I screw one up, then I have uh, one to play with. All right, so on the drill press, using a drill press vise, I managed to successfully drill out the first two inch square mounting plate. And I will use my step bit to drill out the second one. If you'll notice, I put a, a little uh, chamfered key on one corner so that I know that I'm keeping all of my, my layers aligned the way I started. That way nothing uh, hopefully drifts out of alignment when I'm done. And I will, again, when, when I get back, measure what the exact opening target is that I'm looking for. I believe it's 1.525. I'll double check that and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, maybe solder up some finger stock. Okay, so at the start of this session, I said that uh, I needed to clean up the finger stock. That was successful. Soaking it in acetone really did a nice job of uh, at least softening up the adhesive goop. Uh, I had to scrape it off with my fingernail all the way down and then rinse it off really good with uh, clean rags and fresh acetone to uh, get it all pristine and nice and clean. Uh, I ended up with my pieces of cardboard here that some of them ended up ripping, but that's, that's okay. Um, to get a rough idea of where I need to be with the size of the socket inside the cabinet. The last socket that I made, the, uh, the plate squares were two and a half inches square. And then on the bottom plate underneath, I had to trim off a quarter of an inch all the way around to make it fit. So in this, in this round, we're going to make them all two inches and uh, start with that. I managed to create the uh, large opening in the top plate for the grid without injuring myself, amazingly. Uh, I've, I've done that before. And as I stated at the, at the beginning of this, the, uh, the finger stock is 72 thousandths uncompressed, and I want to compress it about 12 thousandths uh, when the tube is inserted. So um, I need to allow for 60 thousandths all the way around the tube. The tube is 1.5. 415 inches in diameter. I'm going to go a little bit small on my first run. I'm going to probably go about 1.53 and then file it out from there. The hole that I that I created with the hole saw, thankfully, is 1. 1.504 so just over an inch and a half I've got about uh, 25 thousandths of material to remove from the inside of this opening to accommodate the finger stock before I solder it to the finger stock to determine how much finger stock I need for the grid I just take it and wrap it loosely around the grid like that and I'll cut it off at the, at the correct length and then use that inside the opening. Um, I don't really want to start that right now. I have to wrap it up today. I won't be back for a few days. In fact, I won't be back until next week. Uh, today is Wednesday. Tomorrow, Thursday and Friday, uh, I am volunteering at the Travelers Championship for two 12-hour shifts. Um, and for that, I get the uh, five guest passes and five, uh, five entry passes for myself and food vouchers and, and trinkets and all kinds of good stuff. So it's a, it's a really good deal. And uh, I'm gonna have a whole lot of fun. I'm gonna volunteer the first two days of the tournament. And I certainly will attend the last two days of the, of the tournament. I think it's gonna be a good one this year. That's all for now. Thanks everyone for watching. As always, please rate, share, comment, and subscribe to my videos. And peace everyone.
Where the hell's my remote? Oh, there it is. 